Hey, hey, Matthew Doyle from Scaleform. Welcome to part two of our Mastering a GFX HUD tutorial series. We're going to cover the HUD wrapper class in this video before moving on to describe the HUD class itself. We've got a lot of ground to cover, so let's just take a deep breath and pick up where we left off. So let's take a look at the September 2010 code of the wrapper class UT GFX HUD wrapper. First off, we declare all global variables. And the most important one we declare is HUD movie. The HUD movie is of type GFX Minimap HUD. GFX Minimap HUD is the actual HUD class we'll be discussing in the next video, where most of the magic happens. We'll use HUD movie a bit later to instantiate the actual HUD. We also declare variables for the scoreboard, pause menu, and inventory screen. We declare the class for the HUD so that a subclass of GFX HUD wrapper, UT GFX Team HUD wrapper, for instance, can just override that one variable without changing the initialization code in create HUD movie. Moving on to the core functions. First up, we have two exec functions that change the zoom level of the minimap. These two functions are fired off by keyboard press events, which are set in the default input.ini file. They're fairly self explanatory, so let's move on. Next up is show menu. This function is also an exec function fired off by the escape key, as bound in default input.ini. Let's load up that file and have a quick peek. I'll just do a search for the word escape. You can usually bring up the search window using the control F key combination. Okay, here's the line we're looking for. Dot bindings equals name equals escape, command equals GBA underscore show menu. This line binds the escape key to GBA underscore show menu. And if we do a search now for GBA underscore show menu, we can see that GBA underscore show menu is bound to our function show menu on release of the escape key. Now, back in UT GFX HUD wrapper, all this function does is executes toggle pause menu, which is found a bit further down. So skipping ahead a little, we find remove movies. Remove movies simply tests each movie type, HUD, pause menu, scoreboard, etc. And if that movie exists, it closes it with the dot close true property, then sets the movie to none. This function effectively removes the movies from memory when it's called. Our next function is pretty important. Post begin play is where we tell UDK to fire off the function that instantiates the HUD, create HUD movie. Post begin play will be fired off immediately after the game starts. Create HUD movie, as I said, does the instantiation of our HUD. The first line creates an instance of the class stored in HUD movie. HUD movie.init executes the init function in GFX Minimap HUD, and basically init starts the movie. We'll talk more about that function in the next video. The local player that is passed in will be the owner of the movie. Now, the local player of a GFX movie player affects a number of things, including where the HUD movie is rendered in split screen and which local players can interact with the movie. In our case, it tells the HUD movie to render and display data for player one. More information on this can be found in the GFX movie player class. Finally, we toggle the crosshairs on or visible. The set visible function is used to hide or display the various HUD elements, and it is fairly self explanatory, so we'll move on. Display hit is an overridden function from UDK HUD. It's used to display the little red directional hit indicators around the crosshairs in game. The function accepts three parameters, and it's used when the player gets hit. The direction the player was hit from as a vector, the amount of damage as an integer, and the damage type received as a class of damage. It then takes these parameters and communicates them to the display hit function found in HUD movie, which then processes the parameters and updates the HUD appropriately. Now this brings us to toggle pause menu. As its name implies, the function toggles the pause menu open or closed. Let's take some time to fully explain how the pause menu works. Remember, it's fired off by the show menu exec function above. This first if statement checks to see if the pause menu already exists and is open. If both conditions are true, it begins closing the pause menu by firing off the play close animation function of pause menu movie. Let's look at that function in the GFX UI underscore pause menu class. Now all this function does is tells the pause menu movie clip to go to and play close. 
Loading the flash file up, let's drill down into the pause menu movie clip. Notice the keyframe labeled close. This is where the Unreal Script function is telling the flash file movie clip to go to. Next we check to see if the inventory window is open, and if it is, we close it, because we want escape to close the inventory movie if it was open. Then the game is paused using playerowner.setPauseTrue. Finally, the pause menu is instantiated if it doesn't already exist. To do so, we first tell pause menu movie what class it should instantiate, in this case GFX UI underscore pause menu. Then we tell it which Swift movie to use with the dot movie info property. Swift movie is followed by the package name UDK HUD, then the dot operator, then the name of the Swift in that package, in this case UDK underscore pause menu. We next fire off the set visible function with the parameter of false so that all other movie clips such as the minimap, crosshairs, and other HUD elements are hidden while the pause menu is up. Then we actually display the menu with pause menu dot start and then execute the play open animation function of the pause menu instance. This function is found in the GFX UI underscore pause menu class file. Looking at the pause menu class again, we see that the function tells the pause menu movie clip to go to and play open. If we go back into the pause menu flash file and drill down into the pause menu movie clip once more, we can see that the second keyframe is labeled open. Okay, back in UT GFX HUD wrapper. The next function is fired off from the flash file of the pause menu with an external interface call. Let's have a look at that call. On close animation complete. It occurs on the last keyframe of the pause menu movie clip when the menu finishes playing its closing animation. On close animation complete is intercepted by the pause menu class on line 82. It tells the HUD wrapper to run the function complete pause menu close, which brings us back to the HUD wrapper class and the next function in line. Complete pause menu close simply resumes normal gameplay from paused mode and sets all the HUD elements visible again. The pause menu is closed, but by using a parameter of false, it's kept in memory for reuse. Take a look at the default properties of GFX UI pause menu. You'll see that B capture input is set to true. This means that all keyboard, mouse, and game controller input will be captured by the Swift file for the pause menu. However, going back to toggle pause menu, we see a curious line. Pause menu movie dot add focus ignore key escape. Add focus ignore key escape tells the GFX movie player to ignore the escape key. We do this because we want GFX HUD wrapper to manage escape and GFX HUD wrappers show menu method to be the sole point of entry for escape key processing. If we did not add escape to the focus ignore keys for the pause menu, pause menu's GFX movie player would actually process the escape key input first. The next function, post render is quite important and will be the last function covered in this tutorial. It's fired off after each game frame is rendered. It's this function that updates and ticks all of the managed movies among other things. It also recreates the various HUD movies if they existed during a resolution change. Initially we do some resolution stuff, and then we recreate the HUD if the resolution has changed as well as on initialization. Here you can see we call remove movies, followed directly by create HUD movie. Next, a little further down, if the HUD exists, we tell it to update by executing the function tick HUD. And we do the same thing for scoreboard and 3D inventory. Okay, there's a few more functions in here, but they aren't all that important to understanding how the HUD works. As such, that about covers the basic functionality of UT GFX HUD wrapper. Next time we'll go into detail on GFX Minimap HUD, which contains the logic for updating the HUD. Until then, I'm Matthew Doyle for Scaleform, signing off.